it's Sunday the 21st of August and I was going to save it till the end and just say it in the last little bit of roundup but I always do but I'm so thrilled to announce that we've got a thousand subscribers I just I've just been beaming beaming ever since we um we hit the number so thank you so much to all of you who put up with my babbling and then have bothered to subscribe so yes i shall be wandering around the allotment today with a spring in my step um and yeah okay let's go for a look around here we go something that um has actually collapsed under the weight of its own success is my can you see if i do this my brandywine tomatoes now if you saw my last video the the same thing happened to the um, the tripod that had the Golden Gate beans on it. It just got so heavy that um, everything had collapsed. But yeah, this is actually, considering all the outdoor tomatoes are in bin bags because of the blight. Look at this. Look, I'm going to... Oh, let's get these away. I don't know if you can see, but let's see. Oh, I can show you this. This is... Oh, let me turn it up. I don't want to turn my back on you. This is what makes it all worthwhile, okay? Brandywine. Oh, look at that. Now, if you're in a different climate, that probably is like standard tomato. But here in my greenhouse, that is the star. And actually, I'm going to delve into the jungle because I am going to have to tie this up again. Bless it. Look, here's the, oh my goodness me, look at that, look at that. Now that has split and has a slug on it, so I don't want to pull it. That is going to the naughty house. Now the annoying thing is, I've dropped the slug. Okay, so the slug's there somewhere, I'll go and find another tomato now. But I have got to... <laughs> how to do it? I don't know how to do it with one hand. Okay, if I... There we are. There we are. And... Look at those. Look at those. Actually, that one's... Oh! That one's been eaten a bit. But you know what? I'm going to slice that bit off. That is just gorgeous! So, and this is why it's fallen over, because the weight of these it's ridiculous. I might be able to just... No, it's going to need another pole in. I never really think these things through, do I, before I start filming. But, yeah. Brandywine tomatoes, they are doing fantastically well. The weight of those, though, is incredible. Let me put that one there. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to be decapitated by a tomato plant. Um, Okay, I'm gently going to lay these down and I'll, oh, and I'll deal with them in a minute. The other thing is my big boy tomato doing well. Is that, no, that's Gigantomo. And I've actually had a couple off my big boy tomatoes already. So it's a shame about that one. And that's my own fault because that's hit the floor and hit the slug. Um, so that's going to go, but look at those. Perfect. So, yeah, considering the ones outside have all got blighted, it feels very strange doing this on my knees. Um, these ones are absolutely perfect. And no sign of blight. If you take a little look at the pond area here, so, you know, it's just gone very dull. It was sunny a minute ago. Um, take a look at the pond area here. You can't actually see the pond. It is a case of <laughs> let's spot the pond. It's in there somewhere. Okay. But you can see I have sadly been neglecting the dead heading of these. Um, what I normally do is just go along and I try not to make too much a chore of it. I try to make it do it as I'm wandering past. And I'm afraid I just throw the other bits on the floor like that. But now I've got my snips. 
it makes life so much easier. Let's see what needs to be deadheading. Well, it's gotten windy now. Okay, now if I was deadheading properly, I would be going right down to there. But because I do everything in a hurry, and I'm not that bothered about the minutiae, that's the word, I just take them off at the top. I think sometimes when there are that many things to do, if I was going for show or something and I was that bothered, I would do them like that, but on this occasion I'm just going to clip them. The hops have taken over the shed, look. But they're very welcome. <coughs> Still pulling up beetroot. In fact, a little bit on the big side to be honest, but that one's okay. When you think, again, this is a sick bed. That was a bit smaller. These have done so well. I don't know whether to just pick two or whether to take the lot, actually. Well, I'll try and find another one, because I don't want them to go too big. Look at that. Look at that, another one. Oh, a wretched slug. I know nature is beautiful, etc. But it's difficult to say that about a slug. So, here we go, little fella. Oh no, now I don't know where to put it. Okay, he's over in the sunflowers. But yeah. Take those three home. That'll be lovely. Okay, still over in the sick bed here, we've got um, these courgettes. Really, that's about the size I should be picking them. I forget what they're called. Gold Rush? Ah, that's it, Gold Rush. These, we have had that many courgettes. We have given courgettes away. We've tried to make things with courgettes. Um, and they keep coming. They do seem to be the sort of thing that the more you pick, the more they grow. But look, we've got plenty coming still on there. And this, <laughs> look, and in here. And this is the bed where nothing would grow. Now it's just being cheeky. Right, hold on. You see, ideally, Ideally, I would only pick as much as I wanted to eat that night. But if I come back down here tomorrow, it'll probably be the same amount again. And you've got to love a yellow courgette, look. They're very pretty. Okay, but I think, even for me, I think that'll do for now. Right, I've, um, as you know, most of my potatoes got blight. So what we did was we took all the tops off and we've left a load of potatoes in. But amazingly, the, well, not amazingly, they're sort of renowned for it really. The Sarfo mirror has hardly been affected. It's starting to get, if I show you, it's starting to get these, these blotches on now. Now, I don't know if they're blight or not, but then they're, they're not affecting the stems as such. However, they are starting to die down. And to be honest, I'm just impatient to know what's underneath. So, bear with me a second. We're going to try lifting our oh, Sarpo Mira. Oh, that's good, isn't it, Chippy? <laughs> and that's our crop. That's good advertising, isn't it? Right, okay. I'm going to go for this one. And I am going to take off the hoom, the hoom, the leaves. Okay, and we'll see what we've got. Really, that's the size of the wanting. That isn't the size I'm guessing. And I guess that's because they need to be in the ground a little bit longer. Oh, look at that. Look, oh dear. Right, I'm going to show you that. Is that an eelworm? That is something you do not want on your potatoes. Okay, not at all. But be Oh, look. Having a nice little dance, but because um, I don't like squidging things, I'm going to throw it randomly over to the greenhouse. There we go. Right, let's see if we've got anything underneath these. I'll be very disappointed if we don't because I've been looking forward to this. Let's see, under here, it doesn't feel like there's anything at all. Uh, okay, few, few. Barney Oh, aha, uh -huh. aha, uh -huh. that's more like it. I don't, can you see those? Yeah, you can see. Let's put those there. 
This is the bit I love though. I think this is what is the best bit about growing potatoes. I'm just going to angle the camera down a bit so you can see a bit more. Mm. Can you see that? It's better. Actually, you know what? It's just starting to rain. <coughs> this is pretty good. Okay, it's not a huge harvest, but this is only one plant. And when you think, if you're throwing them in the bucket, you tend to put maybe three, two or three in a bucket, three, four even. Um, so this is just off one seed potato. And I think if I go and get a spade, I'm going to find a few more. You see, that one is all the way back there. So not bad. Pleased with that. I'm most pleased by the fact that it don't seem to be affected by blight. So, I'm going to go and get my spade, have a last little turnover and see what, have a last little turnover of the soil and see what else is down there. But to be honest, I've got a couple of bakers. I'm quite pleased. There we go. That'll do me. One seed potato, Sarpo Mira, dug up possibly a week or two early, but not bad, eh? Watch out folks, I'm going in. That'll do for now. Something I'll definitely be doing next year is um, growing less beans. I mean, you know, it's great that they're really successful, and I know a lot of people have trouble with black fly, but really, is there any need for all this? I haven't shown you for a while really is my, my herb patch which as you can see is just overflowing the paths now but in a way that makes it even better because as you walk whichever way you walk you brush against the um, the herbs so I've got this uh, English mace here which it's not it what sort of smells that it's not minty can't think of anything that's quite like uh, marjoram is just beautiful and the bees have absolutely adored that and a lot of people say oh no I don't want bees on the allotment but they don't bother you I mean I could knock into that there's no none on it at the minute a few little hoverflies there's one little bee they really really mind their own bee business but it's just lovely to see that they're benefiting as well look at that yeah, so we've got the marjoram, we've got the lemon balm, which I've just let go to flower, but that actually, a couple of leaves of that and some boiling water, you've got lemon tea, it's beautiful. Um, what have we got down here? St John's wort. And then we've got the mint. I'm going all the way around chives, so we've cut back and cut back and they're still coming. But wandering past this mint is just a joy. It's gorgeous and it's only... It's just like a split second after you've walked past it that you get the scent and it's gorgeous. So yeah, I would recommend, even if you've only got a tiny patch for herbs, whether you grow them for medicinal use or culinary use, do grow them because just the smell alone is an, is an added bonus. Just looks like a bit of a jungle there, but it really is beautiful. Here's my cayenne chilies. Now, to be honest, I thought these were going to be a bit bigger than this. And I think they should be, but maybe I just haven't fed them enough. I don't know. It's the first year I've done chilies. Don't particularly like them. Bit of an experiment. But I, I am pleased with the result, actually. These are the ones, I've got a few plants like this that were grown inside the greenhouse. These are the ones that for about the last, oh, about the last month, I'd say, have been outside. And you can see, actually, oh, I'm going to pick one, but I'm going to be careful not to touch the actual pepper. Right, OK. Let's see if we can get this on camera. It's a bit of a difference there, isn't there? You see that? Not as much healthier looking, so 
so yeah so I think by the time I've cropped those what I'm going to do I'm going to um, put them in the dehydrator which is all very posh and preserve them that way have dried chilies maybe grind them up maybe just bag them up but they should see us through a good few months I don't think we're going to be going short of kale I've learned something it's resistant to club root look at it there's so much of it there's only so many kale crisps you can make with rain and I mean up to about half an hour ago it was really really warm outside it was sunny and everything and there's been loads of people down at the allotment today it's been really really nice in fact so nice I haven't got half the stuff done that I wanted to do because I've been talking so um, yeah but still lovely but it is getting to that time of year where the nights are starting to draw in very much it's end of August it'll soon be like back to school time and it, it's almost palpable now that that slight change in the air you know that yeah autumn's on the way and if we get a few sunny days now it'll be lovely but can't expect it um still have got a few things done um as i said <laughs> so so pleased about my thousand subscribers and it shouldn't make any difference it's a number it shouldn't why is a thousand better than 999 well it's because it's a thousand and i'm so pleased so again i said it at the beginning but i'm going to say it again <laughs> thank you so much if you subscribed it's sort of it's, it's quite a strange feeling um because it is just me babbling on in my shed and in the greenhouse and in the allotment but there you go there you go thank you thank you so much anyway what it meant for me was i wanted to treat myself to something i thought right as i was heading towards a thousand i thought right okay it gets to a thousand I'm going, to, I'm going to treat myself to something and it coincided really really perfectly actually with um with an offer that, that brian was talking about on um brian and tony both did a video recently over on uk here we grow i'm always talking about that site go over and have a look um if you haven't done already they have a web page and a facebook page and everyone is so so welcoming and welcome so do go and have a look you don't have to be in the uk to do it but go and have a look um, anyway, they were talking about a, a range of tools they, they'd got from Wilkinson Sword, uh, a proper sort of range of garden tools, and they reviewed quite a few of them. And from that, they managed to get a 10% discount code for the Wilkinson Sword range. So the first thing I thought of when I thought I'm going to treat myself, I thought I'm going to treat myself to a proper gardening tool. But I couldn't work out what to get because if you're the same as me, especially at the allotment, people will have given you things, you'll have got things from left, right and centre, uh, they might not be perfect but they'll do. Um, my spade for example is, it costs £2, it's hanging up on the wall over there, I'm not going to move everything, um, from a car boot sale and it's lovely, it's a proper old spade but it's got a wooden shaft and it's blooming heavy. So. Um, you know, I do think now's the time that I can start investing in little things. So this is what I got. I didn't even know these existed. These called snips. Now, I didn't know what snips were. In my garden, whether it's at home or here, I, I just use, if I need to, I use a pair of scissors. Cheap scissors, I think they're in a multi-pack for a pound or something like that. Or a pair of secateurs. And the thing is, I mean, you can see, I haven't really looked after them. They're very much, I'll pay a few pounds for them and then if they break, they break, or I move on and get a new pair. Um, but what I've found is, I get very, I don't want to go on about this too much, I get quite arthritic hands, I, I knit and make things and sew and stuff, and also I'm out on my bike quite a bit. So my <laughs> Michael laugh when he hears me say that, sometimes I'm on my bike, but I get very, very achy hands. So anything that involves a lot of dexterity, I find quite hard. Um, and I'm finding with scissors, especially with these, you don't realise because you just do it automatically, but opening and closing, opening and closing, you have to concentrate, you don't concentrate, you have to move two ways, 
Uh, whereas with secateurs, any secateurs are spring loaded. So you're only having to go one way and it does that bit for you. These though are across between those and those. Do you love the health and safety here? There's all these, I hope I don't accidentally fall on top of one of these. Um, just in that, they're like secateurs in that they're spring loaded, but they're really light. So whereas, for example, when I was doing the deadheading before, I wouldn't have dreamt of using the secateurs because they're quite heavy. These are perfect. They're perfect. I've um, I snipped my tomatoes with them. I'm saying snipped now. I snipped with my snips. Um, the chilies, I've harvested my chilies. Have a little look at my chili harvest. Can you see? Can you see that? I can't see if you can see that because I've got my glasses on. Um, yeah, because they've got this long nose, they're ideal for actually getting into the plant and snipping it. I found them really, really useful, really sharp, really nice and light. They were something like, I think they were something like between 13 and 14 pounds and then you get 10% off and there was no postage charge. So for just over a tenner, I've got myself something there that I will actually look after and not let go to pot like them or them. So it's nice to think, I feel like a proper gardener. I've got a gardener's tool just the one but it'll do so yeah get over to UK here we grow uh, it sounds like I'm plugging them now I always plug them they're fantastic get over to UK here we grow get your 10% discount code and go over to Wilkinson Swords like I say really good quality good name good price worth it okay that's that chilies like I say that is what I've got of <laughs> three plants they're not very big we're not big on chilies um, so we've got what we deserve but like I said I'm going to put those in the dehydrator there are more to come but I'm going to put them, just put them out of shot of it oh no put them back in <sighs> beans what can I say again I've passed on the Facebook page what different people do with them and fortunately so far I've had no rude answers but uh, what I've done so far is just blanch and make into a lovely spicy bean pickle recipes all over the internet um, but people have said that they curry them they make them into soup um, you can get recipes for runner bean wine which will be an interesting one um, and so I mean I didn't even bother doing all the plants today I mean it started to rain and you, you start to, lo to lose the will to live because you know that for every bean you pick that is going to be a couple of minutes wait not wasted a couple of minutes that you're gonna have to spend blanching it Okay, I've got all those. That's that's this evening's entertainment sorted. Um, but look at this. This. Oh, look. I'd, can you see that? I'm going to have to put my glasses on. Let's have a look. Yes, I think you can see that. Look, isn't this really brilliant? I have been picking the autumn raspberry, but look, that's lovely. What I do with those, I freeze them as I get them. Unless we eat them straight away, these will be getting open. I'll throw those bits out. These I'll be getting um, just put on a tray to go in the freezer. So they open freeze and then you can bag them up and just add to them as you pick them. We've got my beetroot I've picked, my tomatoes. I can't tell you how thrilled I am with them. That's fantastic. Courgettes. Um, Patty Pam, still getting those. And my Sarpo Mira, really, really very pleased. As I say, because it's only... That was one seed potato. I know people get fantastic yields, but all I've done is put them in the soil. And off one seed potato, I've got all that. So, yeah, not a bad yield, eh? So, yeah, that's it for today. I don't know if you can hear the rain now. I've got to make a pantacho. And I've actually, because I've been picking the chilies, even though I've used the snips, um, I've done that. And I can just feel my face is starting to go a little bit itchy. Hopefully it won't fall off. Um, but yes, so what more to say? Oh, I've got so much to say. I wanted to do so much more today. I've got tulips to plant. I have got beetroot to sow. I've still, believe it or not, got leeks that need to go in and um, red cabbage. So they're sitting out there now in the rain. So anyway, at least they're being hardened. Um, but that's it for today once again. I feel like I should have done something more special because it was subscribers. Did I mention I've got a thousand subscribers? But uh, can't. Rain stop play. And 
you know, aside from getting the ukulele out and doing a little tune, which I can't play anyway, so there's not a lot I can do. So I'm going to go away now, I'm doing my ramble. I'm going to go away. I hope you're having slightly better weather than this rain that we're having at the moment. Good for the garden. Um, and yeah, and I hope you're managing to get some harvest in because oh, that's what makes it all worthwhile, isn't it? That's great. Okay, um, and that's me signing out. Okay, see you very soon. Take care. Bye.